Something stellar has arrived to the trucking industry. Introducing the only headset you'll ever need. The Pluto Duo has 60 hours of talk time, 900 hours of standby time, and 99% noise canceling ability. We specialize in active noise cancellation headphones for the trucking industry. We have the professional driver covered. Visit us today at www.stellarelectronic.com. That's stellarelectronic.com. Grand Marathon Trucking is here for all fleet and owner operators. As we all adjust during COVID-19, Grand Marathon Trucking is providing you with new innovative ways to generate revenue during this pandemic. Follow Grand Marathon Trucking on Facebook and Instagram. Click the link in their bio. Start your adjustment with 7 Secrets to Trucking Contracts or 100 Side Hustles for Truck Drivers. Free. Start making more money and experiencing financial freedom in your trucking business. See how advertising on Brittany Richardson can boost your business. Commercial advertising on one of Brittany's shows is both affordable and offers you the opportunity to deliver a simple yet powerful message to a targeted group of consumers that may be actually interested in your product or service. What are you waiting for? Visit www.brittanyrichardson.com slash advertise. Once again, that's brittanyrichardson.com slash advertise. The world has been constantly changing these last few months. But some things haven't. More than ever, RTI is dedicated to taking care of our employees, customers, and drivers. Our staff have made the necessary adjustments to make sure you keep moving. We want to thank you, our drivers, for sticking with us during this tough time. We want to thank every driver for stepping up to help keep our family safe. We want to thank our drivers for keeping America moving. We hope that you stay safe and are here for you if you need anything. Thank you for being part of the RTI family. Thank you for being a part of our RTI family. Thank you for being a part of our RTI family and for being our heroes. We appreciate all you do and be careful and be safe. Thank you drivers, personally, I appreciate your sacrifice and your hard work out there. Let us know if we can do anything for you. I'm so proud of our drivers, so proud of what you're doing for your families, what you're doing for the RTI family and what you're doing for America. You're helping keep America safe and healthy. Thank you. Thank you for being part of the RTI family. Have a great day. Have a safe day. <laughs> Welcome to Trucker Talk Live, where we hear from you, the hardworking men and women of the highway. Now, here's your host, Brittany Richardson. There we go. Welcome to Trucker Talk Live. I am Brittany Richardson. I We have an exciting show tonight. I am so excited. The title is going to be Road Stories, which we will get to in a minute. But I first have an announcement. We are giving away a headset tonight. Well, actually, we're giving it away next week. But to qualify, you got to do something tonight. First, it is the Stellar pluto duo headset pluto and duo combo this is a very high quality headset guys we're giving it away free and all you have to do is come over to social media either Brittany and pink on facebook american truckers youtube facebook page or Brittany richardson on facebook and simply share the post Make sure that all of your settings are set to public. You must share during the live stream tonight. So that is the one stipulation. Come over and share the video so that, and that way I can see who is shared. That's why you have to set the pub, pub settings to public echo, Jake, get along with me. So come over, share the post and I will collect the names after the show and next week we will spin the wheel and see who gets a brand new Pluto duo. So like I said tonight, we're gonna, the topic is road stories. Everybody's got a story. What's your story? Is it aliens? Is it crazy things that you've seen? Bigfoot? 
<laughs> it could be anything. So definitely give us a call tonight, 1-800-395-1576, 1-800-395-1576 with your story. First, I want to welcome to the show somebody that I met over the road who is a fan of all that we do. Her name is Candy Keith. You can see her there on the screen. And... Um, she is full of stories and experience as a truck driver. So Candy, you are on Trucker Talk Live. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing fine. How about yourself? I am doing dandy. It has been busy. <laughs> it's been so busy. Like you guys have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> I've been flying by yes, the seat of my pants. Yes, it's definitely, uh, freight is slowly but gradually uh, picking up, which is a good thing. It's a very good sign of uh, of, of turn of events, so to speak. But uh, yeah, it's it's funny. The day that I got done talking with you and, and meeting you and everything, uh, no sooner did I get back on the road and get back on the interstate, I was boxed in of not being able to get over to the uh, left side uh, of the highway because the entrance had two semis coming on. One of them happened to be a Stevens. And I don't know what this guy was thinking. I definitely could tell he was not paying attention uh, fully to see if I was signaling or not to try to get over because I had a car right behind me I couldn't see the car, but I could see its shadow mm -hmm. and another vehicle on the left side of me. And he decides to just go ahead and try to get over. I had to hit my brakes and honk my horn to let him know, you need to slow down because I can't get over. I can't move. Oh, my and God. So the, the four-wheeler was sandwiched between you and the merging, merging semis? No, the uh, the Virgin Semi was about to hit me while I had a, a four wheeler on the left side of me and one like right oh. behind my butt, and I'm surprised he didn't uh, collide with me as close as he was. Oh my god, that is crazy. Yeah, it was, zombie yeah, it was cars. Scary and I, I mean, I was upset because of the fact that the driver wasn't. Uh, paying attention to see if I was signaling to get over and he should have slowed down instead of trying to force his way in. Mm -hmm. And that's scary in and of itself. It is. But I, <laughs> it is. I, I call I, them zombie I, I, cars. That is my name for them. I don't call them four wheelers. I call them zombie cars because they drive around like zombies. You never know what they're going to do. As a matter of fact, we had this, me and Sadie, when we were on the Fueling Our Heroes project, which you guys will see next week. I'm working on the vlog to it, so you'll see what happened. But our second week, first day, we had this car that right, we're in a construction zone. I'll set the, set the picture here. We're in a construction zone, two lanes southbound on I-35 in Oklahoma, and the left lane's closed up ahead. So everybody's merging over, right? We've been merging slowly for like a mile. So everybody's merged. I'm sitting in my lane, in the right lane, and here comes this car. Um, as a matter of fact, it started as two cars. One was on the shoulder, and then the other was on the left lane and they were fighting on who was going to get into the left lane and then who was going to get over into the right lane. And this one vehicle passed me up and not only passed me, it's not like they passed me and merged over like they could have, which would have been a stupid move anyway to cut off a semi, but they kept driving in the left lane towards the cones. <laughs> And they almost hit another vehicle that was in the right lane when they did finally come over. I'm like, oh my God, what are these guys thinking? Like, you wonder what their mindset is. Yeah, you, you truly do. It's like, it's, the thing is though with four wheelers, okay. Now we are professionals. We get the extra training and the extra knowledge of 
the laws of the road and everything else versus someone who has a uh, classy license. And everybody, I've noticed, has this strong mindset, I'm number one, I'm number one, I'm going to come first, all right? You know, you got to move out of my way, you know, sort of mentality. And that sort of thing is what makes it so dangerous for us and everybody else that's on the road who thinks this way. Mm-hmm. And it has caused more accidents. Our trucking insurance are, are always going to continue to go up because of this mentality, as well as those who want to try to strike at rich with us by uh, making it where we hit them and ruin our career and, and make it where our families suffer because of their idiocy. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, I'm, I'm all for everyone, you know, with equal rights, equal everything. But I feel as though if you have a strong mentality that you have to be first or you have to hurry to get to your destination, my advice to you, don't be on the road. Don't even bother getting in the car. No because kidding. Because you're going to set yourself up to get yourself killed or somebody else in the process. It may not happen that day. It may not happen for a couple of days or weeks or whatever, but it's going to eventually happen. And also with our fellow truck drivers, I have noticed, also has a little bit of that mentality of, I got to hurry up and get this load. I got to, I got to hurry, hurry, hurry. And I'm sorry, but no, (laughs) don't rush it. Because when you do that, you're setting yourself up to get yourself in serious trouble. And and it worries me mm-hmm. and everything to see this. Because me, I'm not going to rush for any load, period, bottom line. You know, especially when weather's turning bad, I'm not going to do it. Because I know if I was to push myself and push myself by, uh, past the limits of what I'm comfortable with, I'm setting myself up to get hurt or ruin somebody else's life mm. right along with mine. And yeah, no. Exactly. <laughs> Everybody's in a hurry these times. days. It's like this whole microwave society where everything, everybody wants something like right now, like right now. And I understand it, mm-hmm. it's a nice luxury. I like the microwave. I have one in my truck. It's very nice. <laughs> It saves a lot of time. Mm -hmm. I get it. But the thing is, when you're getting in a rush like that, then you're not paying attention. You're putting others at risk. And that's the leading cause of accidents in the United States is inattention. People just aren't paying attention. They're in a hurry and not paying attention. It's like that driver that passed us. The funny thing is, okay, they got right in front of us because the other truck they almost hit didn't let him over (laughs) so they had to get behind them and in front of us and when you're driving down the highway at full highway speed you're what six to eight seconds behind that vehicle you know for vehicles it's like a four second following distance so they only saved about eight seconds by passing us like is it really worth it to risk your life over eight seconds Seriously? <laughs> nope. I seriously say no because of the fact that life is too short as it is. And then when you get behind the wheel, because driving is a privilege, right? It is our right as uh, adults to be able to get behind the wheel and be able to drive, right? Mm-hmm. And people take so badly advantage of that to the point where. They are risking their lives and not even knowing it, or they just don't care, or as well as other people that are out on the road. And what's sad is that right now, our newer generation of future drivers, they base their driving on what their parents, aunts, uncles, however anybody drives, because they're learning from, you know, your parents from them Mm -hmm. and when they see that they think that's acceptable behavior that's how we're supposed to you know be and it's not so if you want to stop this type of cycle you have to change your way of thinking you have to change your behavior patterns of doing things Mm -hmm. you know because 
we can't we can't all just change all at once. All right, I get that. I understand that perfectly. But if you want the world to change, whether it's, you know, driving like we do, it has to start with you, and you have to be that leader to show and prove that this is how things are done. Absolutely. You know, regardless of what anybody uh, says, you know, this is how it's done. you got to do it the right way. Mm-hmm. All right? Because if you continue to do things the wrong way, it's just going to continue to make things worse exactly for the next generation of drivers exactly sadly the i say they're ate up with the dumbass like that's what they've caught they've caught this dumbass syndrome and <laughs> they're driving like idiots the dumbasses are multiplying yeah. on the highways sadly so but i wonder if you raised a good point with that that it's more than just do this follow it this set. you know the thing is most of these drivers they know the laws they know they're supposed to use their turn signal they're not supposed to speed and maybe our schools driving schools truck schools should teach more of the principles behind the ideals behind safe driving versus just do this or don't do this for instance like the 8 second thing is it really worth mm-hmm. passing somebody to save eight seconds on your trip, is that going to do anybody any good? You know, and if if maybe they shared some of that logic in the truck schools, or hell, maybe even had some sort of driving school requirement for new drivers to teach some of that basic psychology, like, you know, maybe it would help. Maybe it would. Right. Uh, me, I dealt with a lot of therapists and everything in my life. I've learned from some of the best and everything. And uh, you've always been told as a kid, look outside the box. Well, I've done more than just look outside the box. I look at the different dimensions of the box to know that there's more to the, just what it you know, appears to me. You know, mm-hmm. So I want to have make sure that I have more options I know that there's more uh, detail in the design of things. So I'm not perfect in any way <laughs> or any shape or form. Never will I claim that I'm perfect. Mm-hmm. All right. I have my moments. Trust me. I have my crazy road rage moments, even though my, drug, my truck drives smooth mm-hmm. and everything. But I have my road rage moments to where – yeah, I'm cussing up a storm, and yeah, I'm giving you the evil eye, but once that's gone and over with out of my system, I'm just kind of like, okay, chill. <laughs> You're just pulling an idiot move. It's okay. Mm-hmm. Hopefully nothing happens to him, and just be on my way. Okay. And uh, also, I feel as though if you're late for an appointment or even late for a job, there is, you know, just own up to the fact that, yes, you're late. It does not mean that, oh, my God, i got to hurry. i got to get there and totally go over the speed limit to where you're, uh, you know, risking to get a wreck. It's not worth it. If you're late, own up to it. You're late. Mm-hmm. It's that no simple. Kidding. You know? And same thing when uh, I, I told you about the two uh, truck accidents that I had. You know? Oh, yeah. Uh, what was that thing about the fruit? You had some story that started from childhood about your mo- mother's remarks no, no, about it fruit, wasn't... was it? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the fruit. It was the vegetables. Oh, vegetables. What happened was, my mother told me as a kid, if you do not eat all your vegetables, eventually they're going to come back with vengeance because you didn't eat them. Well... This is pretty funny how it comes back to haunt you. First wreck I was in, I just got done with my 30-minute break, and this happened in the state of Missouri, which I call the misery state because this was misery all the way around. Uh, a flatbed uh, trucker was uh, broke down at a, a – uh, stop sign and everything and I 
there's a bridge on the uh, left side of me, and I know I need to go there. Well, tow truck guy, and then you have an officer on the right side. Uh, I was waiting for the tow truck guy to move, right, with the the, uh, the truck. And I already looked behind me, and I was like, about a good seven or eight trucks behind me. And I'm like, oh, crap. You know, you, you get that sinking feeling like mm-hmm. something's just not quite kosher. Right. So as soon as the, the tow truck guy started to leave, that's when I started to leave to go around the flatbed of the trailer because that was being left behind and they were just going to take the truck. So as soon as I start to pull out so I can get around – a truck has already two or three uh, trucks behind me comes out because he was impatient hauling onions <laughs> and smacks my driver's side, <gasps> launching my headlight like it was Superman. Just pew! Scared the crap out of me so bad. I thought my career that just barely started was about to be over already. Oh my and God. my poor partner was launched out of his bed and onto the floor and did he not have uh, one of those seat like, belts? Oh my gosh. don't they have those seat belt net things in the back or something yeah they do but he forgot to put his on that day oh no oh no so this is a good reminder to definitely make sure you have your net on so did he, yeah he did he ever forget that after that uh, <laughs> to put his net on <laughs> yeah, he he did after that. He he kept the net on. He's like, I am not flying out of this bunker again. <laughs> but uh needless to say, uh he recognized that he made a mistake and uh he comes out of his truck, he sees the damage to his truck and his uh trailer, then he sees the damage to mine, and then he sees that I'm a female he puts his hands on his hips and shakes his head, and I went from, oh, my God, to, oh, no, you just didn't. <laughs> In a flat half second, I was mad. I was extremely mad at that point. And it took me a little while to calm down because my partner had to hold my shoulders to keep me down, as well as I forgot I still had the seatbelt on, you know, because I was about ready to come off come off that truck and just waylay him. But then then I looked and I'm like, oh yeah, that's right, there's a cop right there. So I'm like, you better be lucky. I've got the seatbelt, my partner in that cup right there. Mm, you know? <laughs> just that thought, that mentality of how quick, you know, your mind can shift. So, But needless to say, I wasn't at fault and I forgave the guy because he did stay there. He did own up to the responsibility that he made a mistake. And I didn't bother to sue at all. I felt as though there's no point. I didn't get really hurt or anything. I'm shooken up, but I didn't get hurt. My partner's fine, so yeah. So other than Wasn't vegetables, of- other than vegetables <laughs> coming after you via onions, at least yeah, you were okay. Onions, the onions were the first. <laughs> onions. There's more. There's more. The second one, the second time, which is pretty dang funny because it happened uh, just last year, September, in Oregon on I-84 eastbound, uh, mile marker, I believe, uh, 73 is where I got hit on the passenger side because I was passing a trucker who is a potato hauler. Luckily, he just didn't have potatoes back there. Otherwise, this could have been worse. Uh, I saw him early on waving to the right, in and out of the lane, waving to the right. And uh, so I was like, okay, you know what? If he's going to be weaving and I know I'm faster than him, I'm just going to go ahead, make sure it's safe, get in the left lane, hammer down, get past him, right? Mm-hmm. No big deal, right? Okay, so as I was passing, trying to pass him, as soon as my drive, not my drive, my steers, 
get close to his drive. Now, remind you, I have two cameras. I have the company's camera, and I have my own personal camera recording this. He starts coming over into my lane, and I already see the scenario of what's about to happen. So uh-huh. I go ahead, and I hit my brakes a little bit, blow my horn, and just hang on to the steering wheel with all my force that I could to keep it from uh, going over the uh, the uh, cement guardrail. And sure enough, he hit. And as soon as he as soon as he hit me, that's when he turned his blinker on, which is pretty funny right there. <laughs> and his tandem on his trailer uh, bounced off twice on my steer rim, knocked a good chunk off. My whole right mirror is gone. I mean, it's like, almost like it never existed. The mirror is gone. And the, uh, the door was bent in somewhat and uh, some scraping along the side and stuff. And I couldn't see, even out of my, uh, uh, right side uh, spider mirror uh, couldn't see at all because it was bent uh, forward so I couldn't see out of it scared me so bad that I had my muscles were locked I couldn't relax my muscles in my arms my back nowhere mm. and uh, luckily a lady saw it in a car and she allowed me to when I finally was loosened up enough to get my truck and trailer off to the side. The guy continued to go for 15 miles ahead of me and then finally pulled over, realizing I bent the crap out of his rooms and his tires are shredded on his trailer. Mm. Needless to say, I was really, really badly shaken up at this point. I could imagine. And Yeah. And then I got to thinking, I may be traumatized right now, because this is the second time I've been in a truck accident. I thank the Lord I'm not uh, badly damaged once again. And I couldn't help but think about that lady and possibly uh, her, I guess she had a kid with her or something, because I saw somebody small in there. Mm-hmm. And I kept thinking, if, if, I, if it wasn't me being there, it could have been them, and they could be in serious trouble. That I is so true. Thinking about that really hardcore. So maybe thanks to your truck being there, it kept them from getting killed or in a serious accident, or going over the uh, the guardrail in oncoming traffic. I mean, it could have been way worse mm-hmm. than what it was. So, and then. It wasn't until about a couple of days later after the accident that I got to really thinking about what my mother told me. <laughs> and that's when I came up with, oh, my God, the vegetables are getting their revenge on me because I didn't eat them. I was going to say, did you not eat enough vegetables as a child? Is this what it, what's happening? It, <laughs> They're taking their revenge. The potatoes and the yes, onions. Yes, they are taking they're taking their revenge, and I couldn't help but laugh when I thought about it. The whole scenario, I'm like, I've been attacked by onions, and now I've been attacked by potatoes. I'm like, what else am I going to get attacked with? But at the same time, I'm like, no more. I will eat you. No more. I'm going to tell I will eat you vegetables. Please leave me alone. <laughs> that is hilarious. Thank God you know, I ate a lot of broccoli. Holy crap. <laughs> yeah, so when your parents tell you, eat your veggies, you better listen. Because <laughs> things like this can't happen. <laughs> Take it serious, kids. Eat your veggies. Eat your veggies. Yes. <laughs> eat your <laughs> veggies, that's for sure. Eat them. Um, yeah, there's, uh, there's things like that. Um the, I'd say about the first month of uh, me driving semi, and mind you, this 
this is all new to me at the time. This is all extremely new. I was terrified of getting a CDL. I mean, I was completely scared out of my mind. I'm like, oh my God, what was I thinking when I got into this field? What, why were you so, why were you scared about getting the CDL? Like what was going through your mind? Well, for one, this is a big monster. Two, this thing can take out quite a bit of cars <laughs> if, you know, done properly. It could take out a lot, um, do great damages and stuff. Yeah, they're big and they're beautiful, you know, and if they're in the proper hands, you know, they're a great tool to have to haul what this country needs, you know, everywhere it goes. You know, all your basic essentials and, and stuff. So, mm-hmm. and at the time, I uh, I was uh, getting through a divorce. I was uh, mm. down on my luck. I was working three jobs, didn't know um, how I was going to get all these bills paid. And, you know, I didn't have no money whatsoever for food. I had to eat whatever uh, leftover food at fast food restaurants just to have something in my stomach. I had no money for groceries. I barely had any money for gas, which is sad Mm. to say. And, um, yeah, I was pretty much killing myself. And I pretty much was just like, you know what, God? I'm just going to leave it in your hands. Just just tell me what is it you want me to do and I will do it. I don't I don't care at this point. I need to do something better with my life. This is not cutting it. You mm-hmm. know, and sure enough, 2 weeks later, trekking fell in my lap. Oh wow. How did you how did you manage to get to truck school? Like pay for the uh, truck school? Yeah, that's the funny thing about it is that I, I know and realize the reputation of this one company, and uh, yeah, they're not the greatest of companies to be with, but they, I will give them hands down that they did give me the leg up that I needed to be in this industry. They pay for um, uh, the bus that I needed to get on to get to the school. They paid for my uh, lodging and everything uh, wow. and they pay for the whole schooling uh, when I got to working I had to pay back for the housing that I had to pay back for mm-hmm. as well as um, pay the taxes for uh, the schooling that's not too Which bad fine by me I thought that was you know, an okay of a deal because the schooling was about 8000 and something yeah, definitely. They're not cheap. Like, they're really not cheap. Yeah, they're I not ha- cheap. Yeah, and, uh, well, the thing is, though, schooling wasn't exactly the greatest of schoolings uh, to me because I felt as though most of the guys are just like, well, we're just going to tell you exactly how you're going to get your mm-hmm. CDL, and then after that, you know, it's good luck to you. Exactly. Kind of mentality. Exactly. So, oh, I was, but, so it's... I was- Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I was going to say, we have a caller. Hold that thought. I'm going to put him on. Okay. Oops. Maybe. (laughs) I don't think my touch screen was, I think it was sticking there. Just stay in queue, caller. Stay in queue, caller, and I'll put you through. And what we'll do is we'll continue. I have a lot of questions for you, by the way, just on how like how long you've been driving, going through school, and stuff like that. So what we'll do is, as we have callers call in and tell their different stories between callers, um, I definitely mm-hmm. want to ask you a few more questions for sure. Sure. <clears throat> Let's see if this caller comes back through. There there we go. We got somebody. Somebody's coming through. Let's try this. Uh, merge with call. Dia Yagmore. To accept this call, press 1. To send the caller into voicemail, press 3. Hey, you are on Trucker Talk Live. Hi, how are you? 
Hey, we're doing good. How about yourself? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> if you got a trucker story for us, or a road story? Yes. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm. Uh, yeah. I wanna uh, uh, told my name. Uh, I'm. My name is Zia Yagmur. Uh, we are a truck driver. Like I've been like seven years. Uh, trucker. You know, I have like a lot of experience, and uh, the story, uh, you know, for the, this woman just talking, you know, uh, uh, I want a lot, you know, a lot of story, you know, for me, you know, I have been like, I have like four accidents, jackknife, uh, oh, like wow. last couple, like four, four, four years ago, mm -hmm. and. You know, I've been fine, but the trucks, like, you know, get damaged, you know, because, you know, it was, like, icy, you know, and, um, you know, uh, I get hit a little bit, but I'm good right now. And, um, you know, I want to tell the drivers, uh, the, you know, just, you know, if you, like, uh, like somebody pass you, don't, you know, like yelling or like, you know, oh, say shit or like, you know, like that. Just mm -hmm. let, let, you know, let him like drive, like pass you and give him horn. Thank you so much, you know, and, um, uh, and actually, you know, don't police, you know, give you like, uh, like, you know, like write to you like a ticket, you know, mm -hmm. uh, don't let any police. And the police in the state, like, uh, you know, give you, like, tickets, you know, because you're going to go under your record, uh, the record, uh, and you're going to be, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, like, I think the company, the company, oh, uh, sir, you have, like, a lot of accident or, like, speeding ticket, you know, you know, uh, you know, now I'm worried for the speeding ticket because, like, it's very, you know, I don't know what to, what to say, um, like, you know, it's very bad if you're, Get that within ticket of your in the car or in a truck, because mm -hmm. you know if you go like another company and you get hired, oh sorry man, uh, you're gonna get, get it. Uh, you know we're not gonna hurt you because you have a within ticket. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ab absolutely. Yeah. With the a FMCSA, all of the laws and regulations, your CSA score is everything, guys. And they have this, for those who haven't got into truck driving yet, they have this thing called the DAC report, where a company reports incidents to this DAC report. So every little incident you've had working with that company or minor accidents or damaged equipment is going to go in that DAC report. So when you switch companies, guys, that's going to look really bad on your resume for trying to get a good trucking job. Yes. Yeah, there you go. Uh, you know, and I see like a lot, a lot of, uh, you know, truck driver, like, in a, you know, even in a parking lot, like in a truck stop, love, you know, TA, um, you know, like, you know, it's like, you know, what are you backing up? You know, mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, for me, I take like 10 minutes. But you, you, if you go like checking the, the, your parking spot, like, you know, looking like very dirty, you know, the, the, the food, you know, the, the, you know, dirty, you know, like, you know, I don't know what. But, you know, I have to clean it before, you know, to back it up. You know, please, that's all the driver. Mm -hmm. When you uh, uh, get the, you know, ba like get back to, uh, for the, uh, like trash, I put in the garbage, you know. But mm -hmm. uh, the people, you know, wouldn't care, you know, because because gonna get uh, like that, you're gonna get sick like that for the drivers, you know. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, thank you so much for calling in tonight. Yeah. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, and you know, I watch you all the time. Um, oh, do yeah, you? Um, and then you know, I give you likes and everything. We, uh, I, you know, I like you so much. Oh, I like your, you. your videos, you know, and everything, you know. You know, thank you, you know, like to, to get the, appreciate the drivers, you know, to tell him, you know, uh, uh, you know, don't do it this one, do it this mm -hmm. one, you know, like that. But, you know, sometimes uh, me, you know, I, uh, you know, uh, like new drivers, you, you know, uh, like when you get the new drivers, you know, I know, I know them. Because when you go like uh, all that stuff, uh like uh we're gonna wait like 
uh, like one hour to get the, like uh, this driver to back again this spot. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you know, I know what this driver like in you. You know, have like you know, like a little bit experience, but uh, you know, I you know sometimes I help the driver. Mm-hmm. I'm perfect with uh, helping the driver like that. You know, but you know, the, a lot of drivers like you know love you know I, I talk stuff. Uh, we know, you know, we appreciate that, you know, because I help, you know, a lot, some, a, a lot of drivers, a lot, even like in a company, like in a pickup or a delivery, you know, uh, like you, like you, like you late in a, in a, in a like in a, in a delivery or the pickup, mm-hmm. you know, just get get the smile for the shipping uh, guy, just tell him, hey man, how are you? You know, how is your day? You know, get to smile a little bit. Don't be angry. Don't be sad because you're late or like you're not in a big cab, you're not in a delivery, you're going to wait like two days, going to schedule mm-hmm. you, you know, the time. Um, you know, don't be like rude, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's me, you know, I, you know, I talk to the driver a lot, you know. Just be smile, you know, that's what I do all the time. And get delivery, you know, uh, you know, the guy right away going to give you a door uh, right away. Don't mm-hmm. be sad. Don't be mad for him. You know, just be a smile. Uh, look like you when you go on like a delivery or a big pickup. You know, and um, uh, like in the road, uh, um, if you like, uh, wouldn't have a parking spot. Uh, just go like uh, in the rest area. If you don't have any parking spot, just go in the rest area. Like found mm-hmm. like some uh, like small parking lot. You know, for the trucker. You know. Mm-hmm. Just ask the people over there. Uh, don't be like you're parking in like in a, in a shoulder. You know, I see a lot of drivers park in a shoulder and are like in a highway. You know, a lot. I have too. Yeah. This is bad. You know, sometimes in Ohio, if you go in Ohio in 70, uh, you're going to see a lot. Like if you just mm-hmm. pass the rest area in 70, you're going to see a lot of trucks like go over the rest area. This is bad, you know. Mm-hmm. California is the because same way. I've I seen a park friend, right on the highway, like on the shoulder. I have a ticket. The, mm-hmm. the friend get a ticket. My friend they get a ticket, like that, you know. But mm-hmm. I, you know, I lost the drivers, like you know, the, uh, you know, please, the, uh, you know, uh, told the drivers like that. Gonna be uh, get uh, smart, you know. Gonna find any parking spot, you know. Like sometimes, you know, in Ohio, a lot of parking, you know, uh, even like in a restaurant. Like Wendy's, um, McDonald's, we have like parking. So mm-hmm. the, just uh, search in, uh, you know, Google Maps or like your, your trucker bus or like, the, like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're going to find uh, like a lot of parking spots. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for yeah. calling in. Thank you so much for being a fan. I appreciate it so much. I will look for you in the comments. All right, no problem. Thanks so much. <laughs> All right, talk to you later. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm. Yep. Let's see. Do we still have Candy on the line? Did we lose Candy? I think we may have lost Candy. But what the caller was saying was so true as far as dealing with shipping facilities and stuff. Smile, be courteous. You would be surprised, guys, like how many times just having a good attitude will get you in a dock faster. Not all the time. You may be put in last. You may be accidentally looked over. You never know. But the thing is, like, you'd be surprised how many times you could get far let me try to guys stay on cue if you're trying to call in just um hang tight for a minute i'm gonna try to get candy back on the line and then we're gonna take some more callers as a matter of fact we're about due for for a a break hang on let me see where is candy oh that i think that is i think that was candy (laughs) <laughs> figuring out the new phone lines. Candy's trying to call. Candy is trying to call. Okay. Somehow we cut off Candy. I don't know how I cut Candy off. <laughs> Hi, if you reach my cell phone, that means I'm either driving. Huh? She's probably trying to call through. 
She has the direct number. By the way, I I do have a direct number that I give to the callers. That here we go. Hey, what happened? <laughs> I don't know. It's like it's like my phone decided. Well, I just don't want you to talk to more. Click. It just went on its own. <laughs> oh my god, that's crazy. That is crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's it's. It really is nuts. <laughs> Let me, um, here, we finally got this caller that's trying, trying, been trying to get through for a while. Let me put him on and then we're going to take a quick commercial break and then we'll continue with stories. But let me merge him with the call here or her. <clears throat> From Lee Leonard. To accept this call, press one to send the caller in. Lee, you are on Trucker Talk Live. How's it going? Good. Do you have a trucker story for us tonight or a road story? Yes. You might have to turn your, um, wherever you're watching the live feed, you might have to turn the volume down. It's echoing in the background. Hold on. Yeah, thank now. you. I was watching it on the phone. Oh, that's right. Um, my worst thing, I was up in Virginia, mm -hmm. and I ended up having to, it wasn't me, or I ended up burning my arm. My stepdad was driving the truck. Mm -hmm. I ended up having to get off to, at the truck up in Virginia, and I ended up burning my arm getting all the rig. How did you burn your arm getting on, getting on or off the rig? The truck, you know, your truck has the side pipe, or it had the side pipes. Oh, yeah, the exhaust going, the straight pipes. Mm -hmm. Yep. I ended up hitting that, getting back up in the rig. Oh, my God. How, yeah. how bad was it? I ended up having to, it wasn't, it was second degree. Oh my God. That is crazy. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. That's something you don't think about is getting in and out of the truck. Cause and it wasn't a new truck. Evidence. It was one of the old ones. Mm -hmm. That's probably why yeah, they started putting them under the truck. <laughs> yeah. No, yours is behind her sleeper. I think. Mm -hmm. So what happened? Did they have to take you to the hospital or? No, did... I ended up doing um, putting some um, burning cream on it. It wasn't no third degree. Right, right. God, that's crazy. I bet it hurt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much for calling in, Lee. I really appreciate it. Yep. <laughs> I got in last Saturday, too. Yeah, I remember. I thought your voice sounded familiar. So it's good to talk to you again. Yeah. Keep calling us. Keep calling yep, us. I'll probably be on, mm -hmm. on Saturday night when you're on. Yay. I was hoping more people would be available on Saturday nights. So <laughs> this is yeah, a good Yeah, no, thing. there ain't hardly nobody on. I know. Well, you figure like Sunday, Sunday nights, your a lot of drivers are getting an early start Monday morning, and so they're not yeah. really up in the evening. A lot of people are sitting on the weekend, so it's a good time to call and chit chat. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's nice talking to you, Lee. I will talk to you soon. Nice talking to you. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye. Do we still have candy? Is candy candy got cut off again? Oh my god, this fun. I merged the phone calls and for some reason it's cutting candy off when I take a caller. But guys, we need to take a quick commercial break because I gotta pee. And actually, let me put candy on the line and then we will go to a commercial break. Hey, can you hear me? <laughs> I don't know how you keep getting cut off. It's funny. I tried to move. I, I don't know. My, I swear I'm not touching my phone at all. I ha it keeps showing me one or two bars, and then when I look at it and it, and it uh, turns off, you know, 
hangs up, it's like it still has bars, and I'm like, what kids? That is crazy. Well, we're going to take a real quick commercial break because I got to use the bathroom <laughs> real fast. <laughs> Too much natural calm in coffee. But when we come back, we're going to continue to take callers and I'm going to attempt to keep candy on the line. So we'll be back in a moment. Something stellar has arrived to the trucking industry. Introducing the only headset you'll ever need. The Pluto Duo has 60 hours of talk time, 900 hours of standby time, and 99% noise canceling ability. We specialize in active noise cancellation headphones for the trucking industry. We have the professional driver covered. Visit us today at www.stellarelectronic.com. That's stellarelectronic.com. Grand Marathon Trucking is here for all fleet and owner operators. As we all adjust during COVID-19, Grand Marathon Trucking is providing you with new innovative ways to generate revenue during this pandemic. Follow Grand Marathon Trucking on Facebook and Instagram. Click the link in their bio. Start your adjustment with 7 Secrets to Trucking Contracts or 100 Side Hustles for Truck Drivers. Free. Start making more money and experiencing financial freedom in your trucking business. See how advertising on Brittany Richardson can boost your business. Commercial advertising on one of Brittany's shows is both affordable and offers you the opportunity to deliver a simple yet powerful message to a targeted group of consumers that may be actually interested in your product or service. What are you waiting for? Visit www.brittanyrichardson.com slash advertise. Once again, that's brittanyrichardson.com slash advertise. The world has been constantly changing these last few months. But some things haven't. More than ever, RTI is dedicated to taking care of our employees, customers, and drivers. Our staff have made the necessary adjustments to make sure you keep moving. We want to thank you, our drivers, for sticking with us during this tough time. We want to thank every driver for stepping up to help keep our family safe. We want to thank our drivers for keeping America moving. We hope that you stay safe and are here for you if you need anything. Thank you for being part of the RTI family. Thank you for being a part of our RTI family. Thank you for being a part of our RTI family and for being our heroes. We appreciate all you do and be careful and be safe. Thank you drivers. Personally, I appreciate your sacrifice and your hard work out there. Let us know if we can do anything for you. I'm so proud of our drivers. So proud of what you're doing for your families, what you're doing for the RTI family and what you're doing for America. You're helping keep America safe and healthy. Thank you. Thank you for being part of the RTI family. Have a great day. Have a safe day. <laughs> Welcome back to Trucker Talk Live. If you want to join the discussion, call 800 395 1576. That number again is 800. 800- 395-1576. Now, here's your host, Brittany Richardson. Hey guys, we are back and we are getting ready to go into our number two, our number two of Trucker Talk Live. Our discussion tonight is road stories. We're talking about road stories. What stories do you have? What strange things have you experienced on your time over the road? So we've got another caller I'm going to put on. And let's try to go to this caller and hopefully merge with uh, Candy. From Mark. To accept this call, press 1 to send the call. Art, you are on Trucker Talk Live. How's it going? Well, this is Brittany. This is Brittany. How are you doing, Brittany? I've been watching you for a uh, long time ago from your good old days with having all them problems and stuff over there in Missouri. Oh, wow. Long time follower. That's awesome. Long time follower, but it's the first time I was hoping I would meet you on the road, but uh, mm-hmm. I never got a chance to. Been all over the United States, but uh, never got in touch with you, never caught up to you. And I seen you over there at the cancer uh, 
the cancer parade when you're showing off the truck and stuff, you mm-hmm. and your uh, fiance or your husband by now, I'm not sure because I didn't mm-hmm. keep in touch for a while. I've been watching your videos, I'll be honest with you. Yeah, it's but, still uh, I see you've gotten... Go ahead. I said, still fiance. We've been, we're both so busy. It's hard to take time off and <laughs> go further. But go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. Well, I, I can, I can barely, I can hear you, but I can't understand. You've got a, a very big echo in the background. Can you fix that? Yep. You know what? <laughs> I is that a little bit better? Oh yeah, that's better. That's okay. Better. I Thank forgot you. I had the headphones so that. We we uh-huh. kind of do things off the cuff, so I've got these headphones, if everybody can see on the screen. So I'll put them up to the mic. This is what this is what our caller was hearing. <laughs> Anybody that's on the uh, phone, I want them well, to be able reason, to hear the audio of the commercials. So, But go ahead. Go ahead. Well, the reason that I'm calling is uh, I see you've got a pretty big platform now on YouTube and stuff, and mm-hmm. you're doing well and stuff, which I'm really happy for you, because mm-hmm. you were putting out some great videos. I don't know if uh, you, uh, you're still, like I said, I haven't been watching lately. I've been busy. And stuff's just happening. Go wrong altogether in my life, but uh, that's not where I'm calling. What I'm calling is, I see you got a big platform, and I was mm-hmm. wondering, how come uh, you guys not talking about um, uh, having a truckers union? Which I'm pretty sure a lot of these uh, old-time truckers are uh, willing to, to talk about. Oh, the truck a truckers union. <clears throat> right, a truckers union, uh, something that uh, a, a driver can depend on, somebody mm-hmm. to uh, speak up for them. Uh, mostly, not for the uh, company drivers because company drivers are pretty much to me like sheep. Mm-hmm. Uh, they get behind the wheel and they tell them where to go and how long to stay and when to sleep and when to, you know, go to the bathroom and when to get up. That's but, true. Uh, uh, I'm I'm talking about I'm talking about the owner and operators. I'm talking about the little guy. I'm talking about the guy that wakes up every morning just so he can put food on the table for mm-hmm. his uh, family, so he won't worry about uh, uh, bills and stuff. I'm pretty sure there's truckers out there that they are not looking to get rich by any means in this job, and they knew that going in. Trucking used to be a lot better back in the old days, uh, 80s, 70s, even 60s. Mm-hmm. But uh, lately, everybody's putting so much pressure on truckers. And mm-hmm. everybody's just laying back and taking it. And nobody's saying absolutely nothing. For example, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the CLD bullcrap, pardon my French. Mm-hmm. Uh, they try, with that, what, they, what that says to me, they try to fix something that wasn't broken to begin with. Okay? And for other truckers to say, oh, well... Uh, truckers were cheating. No, truckers were not cheating. Truckers were trying to do their job to the best uh, to their ability. Mm-hmm. What is good for me is not good for you, and what's good for you might not be good for somebody else. Nobody is the same. I don't know any trucker right now that could sleep 10 hours, mm-hmm. as, as, as they say, consecutive. Except for me. Except- I, I will admit I can sleep 10 hours, but I'm a rarity. <sighs> I am a rarity in that. I mean, there's drivers that only take four hours and they're good to go, you know? So it's so true exactly. that everybody's I, different. Yeah, exactly. If I have five to six hours, I'm good to go. I'm awake. I'm alert. And especially if I have my coffee and some cigarettes, I am perfectly <laughs> capable to do my job over and over again. Mm-hmm. Okay, so all this all this uh, ELD bullcrap... Uh, my truck, speaking from uh, my truck with experience and stuff, if I, if I stop and get fuel and I put down on my little computer there that I'm putting fuel, right? Because you mm-hmm. got to do that, apparently. <coughs> and and a- after that, you're supposed to pull away from the, uh, uh, from the aisle so the guy in back of you can fill up too, you know, to be mm-hmm. courteous. If I do that after I'm done finishing fuel, it puts me back on drive. That's how sensitive it is, because the wheels, all wheels are moving. And, and this is just micromanaging the uh, owner operator, and it's nobody is saying absolutely nothing about it, nothing mm-hmm. about it. Everybody's just sitting back and taking. It. I, I, I want to know. I want to know mm-hmm. if somebody is out there could explain to me why there's not much more 
talk about this. Mm-hmm. I think, I Even, think to be honest, I think to be honest, not a lot of people know what to do. Like we know what the problem is, but it's like, how do we fix it? I think a lot of people take the attitude that it's like, well, you're never going to fix it. So why try? And unfortunately, if you have that attitude, nothing's going to change. Mm -hmm. Well, I know a lot of truck drivers that as soon as the uh, ELD mandate came on, uh, there was a lot of old-time truckers that said, you know what, this is going to go down from here. We're on a down row spiral here, so mm-hmm. might as well just sell the truck or park it and uh, see what comes out of it. A lot of a, a lot of truck drivers that I know haven't mm-hmm. got back on the road because of it. They went out and got, like like we say, instructing a part-time job, which is a 9-to-5 job, mm-hmm. you know, just a regular job. Because right now, let's face it, uh, the brokers are, ma- uh, are the ones that are making all the money through that loop that they have. And mm-hmm. they figure out how to cheat the system, and they're the ones making all the dough right now. That's why the freight mm-hmm. is so low right now. Well, here's the and thing. Nobody... I was going to – oh, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I was going to say – The problem is I see it and I'm not an expert at the broker thing, trust me, but on the business side, being a free market capitalistic style model in this country, I don't know, unless you heavily regulate everything, I mean, every business has discretion on how much they're going to charge for a service or their product. And I think therein lies the problem because you have all these middle middlemen, the brokers, <laughs> that are charging what whatever the hell they want, and many times they're screwing over the driver. Exactly. The I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that they kind of do what's best for the uh, uh, for truckers or you know their. Well, what I'm saying is fine. You want to regulate something? That's fine. I'm, I'm all for that. But you know what? Nothing's going to be better until you have the trucker getting paid, just like everybody else, per hour. Per mm-hmm. hour. That's all you have to do. If you, if you pay every trucker by uh, per hour, you won't have, uh, of course, you're still going to have accidents. That's regardless. That's, that's human nature. That's why they call them accidents. You're still, still going to have that. But mm-hmm. you probably are going to minimize that, the hell out of that because nobody's going to be rushing. Everybody's mm-hmm. going to be getting paid per hour therefore they know exactly what you know what where they're going to go and how they're going to get there and you, you know but right now with the stance you got you got 11 hours to, to, to drive 14 mm-hmm. hours total to work yeah drivers are, are just going crazy everywhere just so they can make their appointment if they don't make the appointment who suffers mm-hmm. not the brokers that, that's for sure not the brokers is the driver the driver pays the penalty mm-hmm. nobody else pays the penalty so it's like, it's like kill the messenger, you know? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. It's the driver in the company that suffers and the company is going to send it right all back on the driver. So, but that's exactly. a really good point exactly. about exactly. switching to hourly in a way, because if we did get paid hourly for what we do on these loads, then that may cut some of the crap out. I don't know. Right. Well, I, I, I want to know, I mean, the the point of the matter is we need a union. We need mm-hmm. a union, and we need a union pretty badly. And if it, don't, it does so happen that we uh, we can have a union, it would be one of the most powerful unions that, that this country has ever seen. When the, when the uh, pilots go on strike, because of whatever reason, they don't like the way they, you know, they, they sit there in their little... Mm-hmm. captain's chair and stuff. It's, it's not comfortable enough or whatever. You know, when they go on strike, who gets them back to work? It's the president. Mm-hmm. The president has to come on and, and, and enter a mandate that they have to go back to work, right? Mm-hmm. Can you imagine the truckers? Can you imagine the truckers' union if, uh, if uh, the union, which pretty much represents the drivers, decides that, you know what, we're not making money. We're mm-hmm. not making it all. Right now, as it stands... They're paying what a dollar a mile. If they're paying a dollar a mile, right? So mm-hmm. for every thousand miles you make, you get a thousand dollars. And if you're an operator, if you if you happen uh, to blow a tire after you pay your fuel and your insurance and your wear and tear on your 
on, on, on your tractor. What do you make? <laughs> you don't make nothing. Mm-hmm. You're working for a simple reason. Just when somebody asks you, hey, are you working? You can say, yes, I am. But if they ask you, hey, how much money have you made? <laughs> mm-hmm. That's a pretty laughing matter because you don't make nothing. So that's right. why I don't understand why would anybody nowadays would want to be a truck driver unless you're uneducated and you didn't, uh, you didn't do the, the research on truck driving. Truck driving looks good from the outside because there's mm-hmm. a lot of stories and movies made about it. Mm-hmm. You know, it was, it was the hate glory days in, in, in the 60s and 70s about truck drivers. That's when they were making money. Mm-hmm. Now with all the penalties and all the rules and regulations, you're not making nothing. You're better off. Believe it or not, you're better off working at McDonald's nowadays and be home every day with your family than uh, uh, than being out on the road and uh, try to make money with a truck. Unfortunately, unless, there are some cases and, where yeah, that's well, true. I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm speaking about the owner operators. I'm mm-hmm. speaking about the people that that own their own trucks or they're still paying for their truck. But that's the only reason why they're working again. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? It's it's a it's a, it's a never any circle. If you don't run, you don't make money. If you don't make money, you can't make the payment for the truck that you're driving. And if mm-hmm. you don't make the payment for the truck that you're driving, guess what? It gets repoed. And all that money which you just put into that truck goes out the window. Exactly. It's I was talking to, to, uh, to learn, but mm-hmm. I was talking to that? Trucker Style Sean. He's a YouTuber, and he owns. He he started with just a few trucks and here a couple months ago he had like three to like 12 trucks he's up to 30 something trucks right now on a dedicated route he owns his own company and one thing that he did say because he is making money like he's doing well even right now but then again he's got dedicated contracts so he's been able to offset what we're going the rest of us are going through but the thing is he said that he would not take a loan to buy a truck and become an owner operator. He saved up his money and bought an old truck. It was an old truck, but he saved up like $10,000, paid it off. That way he had enough margin to play with when you did blow a tire or something happened. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, unfortunately it's not what it used to be. And a lot of, a lot of these, uh, these students that go to truck driving school thinking, oh, man, I'm going to get my CDL. And I'm, as soon as I get out of there, I'm going to go on the road. I'm going to see all these places, and I'm going to make some big money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, part of that is true. You are going to go a lot of places, and you're going to be in a lot of places, uh, times that you might not want to be there. <laughs> you know? I mean, <laughs> I mean <laughs> that's, that's the truth. You're going to see a lot of places. As far as the pay is concerned, no. Yeah, it, but and, and the, a lot, I think, depends. And I do agree with you, by the way, on all of the challenges and how crappy it is for so many out there. Uh-oh. Our audio feed cut out. There we go. <laughs> I think we're back. So I agree with you on that. But at the same time, there also, I believe there also is a way to work it to make money. Because I know there's so many drivers at RTI that are rolling in the dough even right now. I I think the biggest thing I've noticed guys, and this is just my personal opinion, but dedicated accounts are the bomb. And it's because the contracts are fixed at a certain rate. And no matter what the economy does up or down, you've got a contract for at least so long to guarantee, you know, that you're going to make it. So I think a lot of it is, how you prepare yourself as well. But to answer your question on the union, like why, cause I do have a huge platform. I mean, I'm, I'm in all, like I have to pinch myself every day because this is just blown up. Like <laughs> I'm the same person I right. was when with one subscriber, you know, that's how I feel. But the thing is I'm on the fence on unions, just being very transparent because I've seen unions where they have, rescued people i've seen especially in i won't name like departments but i worked for a state and i've seen people left in the dark screwed over their state just screwed them out of retirement or they got injured and the state didn't pay for it and it was the union 
that stepped up and saved their ass. And so I've seen the power right. of a union, but at the same time, when things are so, when things do get heavily unionized, it almost becomes like more regulation, so to speak. It's just like, there's too much. I don't know. I don't know. I'm on the, I'm on the fence about it, but I'm open ears. I really am because something needs to change. Something definitely needs to change. The, I mean, uh, we haven't got a raise. We still make the same amount of money as uh, as uh, the truck drivers back in eighty three, eighty four. Mm -hmm. uh, we're making. Yeah, and we're really it not making the same, right? Standard. Because of inflation. And, uh, yep, yeah, because of inflation. If you were, if you were to add that up, we would be owed a lot of money. But we haven't, we haven't got a raise in that department since like eighty three, eighty four. Mm -hmm. Okay, but as far as as far as regulations and stuff. Oh, up to, up to wazoo, we got regulations. You can't do mm -hmm. this, you can't do that. I, I, I'm surprised they don't, uh, they, don't, they don't want you to uh, have a front-facing camera uh, every time you, you go home, too. Oh, I know, right? You know? <laughs> See what you're doing on your off time. Maybe like, you didn't sleep enough. You know, is that coming down the pike? <laughs> believe, it or, believe it or not, you can get in trouble for that, too. Mm -hmm. If you if you come off your off time and you're not rested well enough, or they can prove that you did something and you didn't get uh, enough rest, they can they can dock you for that too. Mm -hmm. You know, you get a uh, bad report for that too, and that's in your off time. Mm -hmm. You know, your own personal time. I just don't know why 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 drivers don't recognize this more. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's very important. You know. Mm -hmm. There can definitely be improvement in the system. I I agree completely. Oh, definitely. The, the thing is, definitely. Bef before the e-log mandate, there were drivers that were running two, three, four logs and getting in accidents mm -hmm. and falling asleep. So it was an issue. I'm not saying it was like a pandemic, <laughs> but... It, yeah. I saw some of the negative but, side oh, okay. of no regulation as well. What? So it's, no, I would say we need see, to find some place in the middle. Where everybody, <clears throat> that's where everybody makes a mistake. Mm -hmm. I mean, just because you go out into, uh, in, in, into the field and you collect uh, apples and you notice that you have five or six bad apples, okay? Are you going to throw away the whole basket? And then right. go take some more apples? No. You're mm -hmm. going to take the rotten apples and you're going to throw them away and you keep the good ones, right? Okay, mm -hmm. everybody's got a CDL license. Everybody, every, every person, is, it's got a number on that CDL license, which follows you. If these people were driving recklessly and, 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 and getting into accidents, why don't you talk to them about it? Why you got to come, let's say, after me? Mm -hmm. Okay, I haven't had an accident. I've been driving for over 10 years now. I haven't had one accident, one feather bender. But yet, mm -hmm. you submit me to, to, to your stupid rules? I don't understand. Mm -hmm. You know, why don't you go after the bad guy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. That's a good point. If we could figure out right. a way to do that, it makes sense. Now, I will say this on the union side. I could see the benefit of that because here's the problem is I don't know if you guys saw on uh, CDL Life, there was an article that came out, I think it was CDL Life, and it was saying that the board members on the FMCSA that make these rules, they none of them have ever held a CDL. How is that right? right. And yet they're mandating our entire industry. I mean, this is ridiculous. Right. And I, I think a union yeah, could help get the numbers to where we can get together and get something done. Right. And that goes, that goes for the people that are trying to put rules and regulations on trucking. And for me, this is only my opinion, for me, this also applies to the dispatchers. You should not be allowed to get hired as a dispatcher. I don't care how much you can pull crap, you know, because... To be a dispatcher, you've got to know how to pull crap pretty damn good. <laughs> you know? But to me, you shouldn't be allowed to be a dispatcher unless you have at least three years' experience in the truck. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> then you know exactly what the driver is going through. 
Because if you're going to pick a guy just because he can lie beautifully, you know, mm-hmm. with a straight face, that doesn't make him a good dispatcher. Right. That just makes him a con artist. You know? I, and I agree with you because, like, in RTI, a huge number, I don't know what the percentage is, but a huge number of the dispatchers have been drivers. Like, they know trucking. So right. they're so easy to talk to because you're right. like, you know how it is. I ran into this situation. I'm doing my best. Here's the ETA. You know, and they understand it's not a problem. But I wonder if we would have enough dispatchers. This is just a side thought. Is if we would have enough dispatchers if we required them to have trucking experience. Is Are there enough truck drivers that would even want to work in dispatch? I know I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to even oh, work I, for I a day either. in dispatch. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't either. Uh, but that's all I, uh, I called in for, because this union thing mm-hmm. has got to be addressed, and, and something's mm-hmm. got to be done about it. I mean, the government's uh, walking all over us, putting all kinds of regulations in, and you know what? We're mm-hmm. like just sheep, which is bad, bad, following absolutely everything that they say and do. Mm-hmm. So one of these days is going to come up, but you know what? As soon as you pull into the way station, if they pull you <clears throat> on the side and tell you to come in with your paperwork, they'll probably do a strip search, too, and you know what? <laughs> Everybody's going to go around with it because, you know what, that's what the law is. Well, you know? people people have so a sheep, I, sheep I just, mentality, unfortunately, and that's one thing that's wrong right. with the world. <laughs> right. So I, 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 would like to, I, I would like to, you know, see more done about it. You know, mm-hmm. if, if, I, if I would mm-hmm. win the, the, the lotto, you know, I would, that, that would my, my whole thing for the lotto, that's exactly what I would what I would go for. I would mm-hmm. try to start a, a trucking union. That's where all my money would, would go for. Mm-hmm. Because this is this is a ridiculous thing. Well ridiculous. I really I think it could be a very good thing. And I know um I'm not endorsing them necessarily, but I know there's a Facebook group called America Without Drivers, I believe. America Without Drivers and they have been organizing right. owner ops and getting people together to talk about how we can change things. And they're serious. They're like ready to get something done. So, you know, I could see the right. benefit to, to getting a union and the, the key would be to get enough people on the same page and go after one thing and have a real solution. Yeah. And I think we could see change, but I really appreciate you calling in and thank you so much for, for following for so long. Like, I really, really appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Oh, no problem. Awesome. No problem. I got to start doing that again when my life becomes normal again. But, um, <laughs> for now, I just happen to, it, it popped up because I, I, I'm still subscribed to your page and mm-hmm. every time you go live or something, the bell rings and, oh, that's you know, awesome. they tell me what you're doing and stuff. Well, thank you. So uh, this is the only reason why I'm calling because I saw you. I was like, oh, my goodness, look at this. She's already <laughs> on the talk show. Next thing you know, she's going to be on my TV. I said We're working on but... that. We're working. I actually did have two, three, three now reality yeah, you were TV on the programs. News. Yeah, you were on the news clip. Oh, beyond the news. I've had, I've, had, um, yeah. I've had production companies call wanting to make a deal for a oh, reality okay. show. I turned down all three and it's because they wanted exclusivity. They wanted me to shut down everything that I do on social media and videos. And they wanted complete (laughs) exclusivity and little or no pay. I'm like, really? Are you serious right now? I'm like, oh, hell no. (laughs) Well, you'd have an opportunity to be on TV. And the other thing, I'll tell you the other thing that did it. They reality TV guys is as fake as anything. It is ridiculous. They had me reading yeah. scripts in the casting process and said, Oh, nobody will ever know. Just pretend you're pissed off about this. I'm like, I can get kind of playing up a certain direction or something. If something happened and you're pissed, maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe them say, well, why don't you phrase it like this? It would be funny. Okay. I get it. But completely fabricating a story and then calling it reality. It pissed me off. I'm like, Oh, hell no. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you had some nice choice words for them. 
Okay, no. yeah, I was pretty blunt. <laughs> but thank you so much for calling. It was so great to talk to you. Oh, no problem. You keep up the good work. I didn't want to change the subject that you guys are talking about, about road <laughs> stories and stuff, but uh, I just wanted to see if I can address this point a little bit. Maybe we'll make a show about it, maybe not. But That'd I just wanted to be a pest. That's all. Awesome. Thank you so much. Don't be a stranger. All right, no problem. All right, bye. All right, Brittany. You have a good, uh, good day and stay safe. You too. Bye. <clears throat> okay, guys. I am going to attempt to get Candy on the line. I know she was only available for a certain amount of time tonight. I did want to ask her a couple more questions before we take more callers. Let me see if she's still available. It looks like she is watching, too, because here she is. Hey, I'm yeah, so that- sorry. I saw that, uh, when you hung up with him, uh, it hung me up right along with him. That is so weird. That yeah. is so weird. Uh, he did have a lot of good points. And I actually did thought about, you know, why haven't we have a, a union yet, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, there is pros and cons to having a union and everything. And he's brought up a lot of good points. And uh, trucking is definitely not what it used to be and stuff. And, uh, yeah, I, I've... I'm pretty strong on that, that we definitely need a union, someone that can help us because with the government being in our business, and yeah, I'm going to say it, with them being in our business, ruling our lives like they are because they're so power hungry, it's unreal. Mm -hmm. And and it's because it's our fault as American people. We gave them too much power. We need to take that power back. If that means we don't reelect them, then we don't reelect them. They got to go. Mm-hmm. You know, so like true. I said uh, before, it's like this. If you're not for America and America's people, you've got to go. It's that simple, <laughs> that easy, that simple. Because we need people that's for us, that's looking out for us, the American people in America. Because we shouldn't have people, you know, in poverty at all. We should be able to have it where you can work one job while your spouse is at home trying to make sure that the kids are well-fed, dressed, clothed, and they're learning the basic needs, the necessities of how to survive when you finally grow up and leave the house and be on your own, mm-hmm. you know? So and true. we need that. We need that so, so bad. But, you know, what can you do? You know, you're, you're pretty much only just one person and – the only thing I can think of with you just being one person, you can set the tone for everyone else around you mm-hmm. by doing simple things, you know, changing how your outlook on things, uh, your looks, whatever, you know, just to change because change is inevitable mm-hmm. in all of us. We're going to change as we grow. We're going to change. And so, you know, in this whole journey that we all have in our lives, we have to make better decisions. We need to do better decisions for ourselves. We need to go back to basic, simple things. So that way we're not having to, you know, stress out so much and always everything being in chaos, you know. As for all across the board, all of us humans, you know. We need to go back to basic, uh, simple things. We do. So. We do. And everybody probably knows my feelings politically, but it's it's ridiculous. We, we all want to gang up with somebody. Republican, Democrat, Independent even becomes its own gang. And I, I wish that more Americans, and I'm not bashing Democrats or Republicans or Independents, but... I wish that more people would realize, see their identity as an American and not as, well, I'm a Republican <laughs> or I'm Democrat. Like, right. I'm an American citizen and these are my beliefs and let's have a good discussion and let's vote for the right people. Also, my critique of our voting process, especially in the, um, the, pre- what is it called? The preliminary, the um, 
what do you call that? The pre-vote before yeah, the actual vote? Uh, yeah, it's uh, the pre-preliminary voting and stuff. And with them doing this uh, mail-in voting is one of the reasons why we quit doing the mail-in voting because they cheat. Mm -hmm. They can easily change what you voted for and, and everything, and mm -hmm. that's why we quit doing that. And the fact that uh, the Democrats, especially Pelosi, oh, yeah, I'm singling her out on this one, <laughs> forcing that this needs to be mail-in vote is the reason why we're having more and more issues of people doing fraud because they're getting paid extra money to mm -hmm. do it, and this is where we have chaos, and it needs to stop. We need to stop the chaos. Oh, that's because true. Because we need our government to come together. Everybody needs to come together. And we need to do this the right way. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's on a computer system, whether it's, you know, um, heck, just even doing it on your phone. You know, create a website. Make it where you can go to it and have the system recognize you, your name, make sure that it is you and it's not nobody else and what you, you know, vote for. Mm -hmm. So that's what I think needs to happen. Since we have this COVID thing and with elections coming, we need to make it where we can do it on our phones and mm -hmm. our thing. None of this melon junk crap because that's just going to create chaos. It needs I to be agree. simple. I agree completely. And what irks me about this is you have to pick a side right on on the voter paperwork you have to on the ballots you have to pick a side are you republican are you democrat and yeah, yeah you can vote for anybody on there but they make you pick and it pisses me off it's like it should say i'm an american citizen now vote <laughs> yeah yeah and the thing is though it's you know we the american people need to make sure that when we vote, we're voting for somebody that we know is going to be for us, regardless if they're Democrat or Republican or liberal, mm -hmm. whatever. You know, that's what we need is we need to do our own research to make sure that this person is not going to sell us out. Because right now, as it stands, a great chunk of them up there has sold us out many a times and we have not done anything to stop them. Mm-hmm. And that comes back to us. It's our fault that we let them have this power. And we need to find a way to take this power back. And I feel as though we, the American people, need to vote as a whole that agrees that they need to be on terms, which means two terms, just like the president, and then you're gone. That's it. No more of this 20, 30, 40 years crap. Because guess what? We all know... When you become old in your 80s and 90s, you are not really thinking clearly. <laughs> it's sad. Your to mind you. is gone warped. <laughs> I already know that's going to happen to me, and I've already accepted that. David Snyder, or David Sinclair, he's a Harvard uh, longevity scientist. He's a researcher, and he's made so many discoveries on things that can cause us to live longer, to think clearer. But he talks about this in one of his books. I would love to have him on one of my programs because I would love to just pick his brain. But my point is, <laughs> he makes that point in this book that when you get old, you're the, they call it the transcription process of your DNA and your RNA transcribes or your DNA transcribes through your RNA or something. Anyway, it's like the old... Uh, cassette tapes for our older audience <laughs> if you remember those if you take a cassette tape and you like re or a beta v or vhs uh tape player and you record over and over and over then it slowly gets warped over time and that's what happens to many of us as we age our cells are not the same we're not thinking clearly we're not thinking the same way and if we could it would be amazing because can you imagine a 90 year old that looks like they're in their 30s, they're acting like they're in their 30s, clear minded. Think of the wisdom that they could pass on to others. Oh, like it yeah. would be amazing. Oh, oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. Elderly people, 
They've seen there, been there, done that. And me, I love picking the elderly's brain because of what they know. So that way I know what I can do to make sure I don't fall into that same category like they did. You know, mm-hmm. it's your, you know, history is meant to be learned. So that way we don't create the same mistakes again. You know, it is. We, Have we you guys, that. Do you remember the movie, The Matrix? The Matrix. Oh, yeah. I love The Matrix. Anyway. <laughs> Keanu Reeves, oh my God. Oh, I know. He makes me hot. (laughs) So, okay. So with the Matrix, that scene where they're downloading information into them, just like a computer. It's like they put a file in. You need to fly a helicopter. Sit down. Hang on. I'm punching it in. You're going to have all the skills to fly a helicopter. That is how I see books and talking to people like when you learn something from somebody who's had a lifetime of knowledge it's like having the ability in the matrix to be able to download a lifetime of skill in a very short amount of time simply sitting down and talking with somebody who's been through it it's amazing yeah it's it's definitely uh amazing in and of itself but knowing that even though right now that technology is out of our grasp for the time being, but eventually it will get to the point where we could wind up going that direction. You just never know because future is always changing. It's never going to be the same. But if you want to know exactly what your future is, let's take a step back of what you've been doing in your past. Mm -hmm. That gives a good clue there. But, uh, you know, everybody's different. Everybody has a different thinking process. Everybody has, you know, their own opinions and stuff. And uh, to me, opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got one. <laughs> so, you know, That's I mean, so I accept that, you know, and I believe me, I have my moments where I'm a pain in the butt and I accept that fact because I'm human. It, you know, regardless of me being a female and, and everything else, I'm human. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make mistakes. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do something stupid, you know, but the fact of the matter is, you know, is that I learn from my mistakes and I try hard not to give up because when you give up, that's when you truly failed and you just let that, you know, win. That is so true. And see, that's once again, that's why I'm a big advocate of books and as a truck driver, audiobooks, because I've listened to like the Sam Walton book Made in America. And I understand Walmart's not perfect. I'm not saying that. But it goes over the story of everything the guy learned and how he was able to grow this in his small business, small, tiny town business in Rogers, Arkansas, into Mm -hmm. a massive, massive corporation. And to be able to sit down and spend a few hours and all of a sudden download that information, it's like now I've got the information that he took a lifetime to learn. So I'm just fascinated okay. about how much you can learn through books and through talking to people. And that, I think that's why I'm so fascinated too about talking to people like Candy Keith and Sheree Moore. <laughs> and everybody has well, a story and, and you can learn so much from each other. Yeah. Um, I, I got just, I got a story for you. Uh, I just remembered, um, you know how a lot of truckers, uh, some guys are really gross and disgusting that they'll pee outside their truck. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, I was, we had an well, encounter was, like that on fueling our heroes. <laughs> uh, trust me, this is pretty hilarious how I reacted to this guy that I saw peeing at the shipper by his truck. Cause he was too lazy to go to the door and go use the restroom inside there. Oh my I God. saw him peeing. And at first I was going to say, <laughs> You disgusting creep. I was going to yell that to him, but instead, instead, I'm dead serious. I would not make this up because I did say this. And my fiance is a witness to this. I told him, I said, hey, buddy, you need to drink a lot of water. That urine is freaking dark. Drink water. He looked at me shocked and awe, like, what the hell? And he and he thought I saw his Peter. I'm like, no, I didn't see your Peter. I just saw your stream, dude. And, and that that's good enough for me. I'm like, just drink a lot of water. And, and the only thing he could do was big eyes at me and just shook his head, yes. So, oh my god, that's so funny. That's so funny. It, it, 
It's yeah, better I than mean... some of the guys because with I did not see this. Now it was Sadie. I was already in the truck. We had our curtains closed. Sadie's like, I'm going to check out something in the truck stop. And I forget if it was shower. She was taking a shower or something. Anyway, she, she came back um, 20, 30 minutes later, knocks on the door. And she's like, here, let me in. Let me in. Let me in. I'm like, why? Wait, 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 wait. She's like, the truck next to us parked just to the right of pink. <laughs> the guy had his curtains open. And he was standing up, butt naked, like completely naked. And he looks at her and apparently he was peeing. He was finishing up peeing in a bottle or something. And he looks at her and sh she just like stared at him like, oh my God, like horror. And he just like starts swinging or shaking or something along the yeah. lines he was unashamed he wanted her to see everything and she gets in we lock the door she's like oh my god i hope he doesn't try to get in the truck you know and but it's it's ridiculous it was crazy yeah it's i mean now if now i can understand if you're at a shipper assignee and you're waiting a long time and they don't want to use the faculties plus they mm -hmm. don't have a port of probably for you to go to i can understand you know you use a bottle for us women it's you know like a container or something or what have you or heck mm -hmm. even the trash can because we don't have something to hang on to <laughs> we squatters okay no we kidding. do the squat yeah. all right and we can't you know especially us women that you know, I've had, you know, quite a few babies and our bladders are just shot to hell. Okay. Sorry to say, you know, but you know, that's my case. Me, I know if I'm way too far from the truck stop mm -hmm. and my bladder's saying, you got to go, you got to go now. Uh, well, guess what? I got a little something in here that I can use. So that way I can take it, go to the inside of the truck stop, get it dumped, clean it out. Mm -hmm. I'm good. Exactly. You know? Get a go girl, something like that. I mean, there are options, but for the guys, it's even easier. And it's like, what are you doing? <laughs> why, why don't you I... have a bottle or something in the truck and close your curtains? Like, come on now. Come on now. Yeah, I, yeah here, here's something that's interesting. I saw <laughs> a guy literally had a bottle, a good sized bottle underneath his pants on his inside of his right leg and apparently it had a tube because you could see the outline of the tube going connected right to his peter and i'm <sighs> like if you're using tape dude you're gonna lose a lot of leg hair and that's gonna <laughs> hurt <laughs> oh my God. that's my only thought because i'm thinking mm. if you've ever experienced a wax in an area you never waxed before, it's going to hurt. <laughs> no kidding. So, uh, you know, the inventions of ways that, you know, to make it where you can go to the restroom and be discreet about it. But, uh, mm -hmm. you know, with all these truckers, regardless if they're male or female, uh, I'm not discriminating on either end or whatever, mm -hmm. or if you're an it, you're a mix of both. I mean, I don't care. The fact of the matter is, is that, Please do not pee or dump your pee outside of the truck. I mean, do we need another episode of the Black Plague again? Oh, I know. You would be shocked. Like, oh, my God, me and Sadie, we went to so many truck stops this time. And it's not that I haven't seen it before, but for some reason, maybe it was that, I don't know, maybe it was Sadie pointing it out every single time and I just got used to it. But <laughs> they dump it. In the paved parking lots, like at the Loves, at the Pilot, they just dump their bottles, like, right next to the truck. There are, were pools, guys, like, pools, pools, lakes, lakes. There were lakes, yellow lakes in sections Ugh. of the parking lot. It was nasty. They had smelled of urine, and they're just dumping it right outside the truck on the pavement. People walking through it. It's like, really? Really? Especially, especially when it rains, you get a really strong whiff of it then. You do, and, and it was lost. raining. It was raining. Yes. Uh, it, oh God, it's it just, so it's just terrible. I mean, I mean, I, I get it. Mother Nature's trying to wash it away, but I'm like, we need SOS and scrub pads. This crap ain't going anywhere with this water. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh god lord give us something <laughs> Yeah. We've got another caller trying to call through. I'm going to try to merge him with you. <laughs> All right, just try not to hang me up with him again. <laughs> I'm going to try not to. Let's see if we can merge the call. <clears throat> to accept this call, press 1 to send the... Danny, you are on Trucker Talk Live. Hey, Brady, what's up? I want to talk about, on a serious note here. I re respond to that one caller about the union situation. You know? Okay. Um, uh, the old timers, I got, again, more and more respect for the old timers. You know, uh, as far as, you know, 1099 subcontractor drivers, I'm speaking for drivers that are like me in situations like me. A lot of subcontractor 1099s arise to become owner ops, you know, mm -hmm. and and I was thinking to myself, the union. Um, I know of it. I've never been part of a union, but if there was the something to represent us too, because not you know, ops, not all company drivers and subcontractors are told what to do when they go to the bathroom or whatever, you know what he was speaking of. You know, I run. You know, we we, we grind too. We're mm -hmm. out here grinding too. And getting our shit done. Mm. And as far as the the two sectors go to union, I was, you know, if there's going to be something for us too, because exercise is very part of important part of the industry. And and you know when we're out here getting taken advantage of and all these other things, for example, like the channel, the wife started the channel for that lady that didn't get paid three or four weeks. You know, I had to get her. Uh, steps to go and uh, recover her pay, uh, file claims court and all these things, small mm -hmm. claims court. And a union is, you know, I don't think there's any out there. And, you know, the big truckers get a lot of misconception about us expediters at straight trucks. They do the cheap freight, but they do this. No, 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 no. We don't do the cheap freight, first of all. <laughs> okay. Uh, second of all, we're out here executing just like an owner op would or anything like that. Like I mentioned, I may become an owner op soon. But at the same token, at 1099 independent subcontractors, you know, we represent ourselves still. And if there's a union for us as well, I mean, you know, it, it, there's a lot of things that have not happened. Pay. Hey, like they were mentioning, you know, hardly anything has happened over the years and uh, for uh, a lot of drivers and all these things. But, you know, it's, I just wanted to speak up for as far as, you know, the company or 1099 drivers or subcontractors that are independent. And, you know, we, we uh, you know, we don't have no representation out here at all either. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people. The turnover ratio, being taken advantage of, is extremely high. And my experience in this business, where I stuck with it and found out what it takes to overcome all those things, is second to none. It's, it's so much that, uh, you know, if, if you go through it as a 1099 subcontractor and you rise to that level, you finally get to the point where you're going to become an owner off. You went through all the bullshit with the shady owners and all these other things, and you had no representation yourself. And a lot of people give up on it, mm -hmm. you know. And if there's some representation, like it, like a union like that, uh, for like it could be two sectors, like the original union for the truckers, mm -hmm. and one for the expedite division or something, because there's a lot of people. And, and I didn't mention it before, the calling before. There's still a lot of be people taking advantage of. Time and time and time again, you know, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> there we grind too. We're out here doing the grind. We get things done. We get, we're out here hustling. This is a, you got to be a hustler in exploring. You've got to be a hustler. Mm -hmm. If you're not a hustler, psh, you ain't gonna make it. You will not make it. Mm -hmm. And and having like a union representation for 1099, so contacts such as myself. It probably would have not, I probably would have endured what I did in my early years, 
you know, I didn't start driving until later in life. Mm-hmm. You know, and a lot of owner ops, you know, I'm, you know, they start off like that too. I'm not saying all of them do. And plus, there's there's advantages if your family is into truck and your father, your grandfather, or whoever, or a family member has a trucks and they they're teaching you in the industry. You get to the point where you are given, in some cases, a truck. And you have your own truck. That's a huge, massive break. It and somebody that's got to sit here like me, and I got to save every year, second year, third year, fourth year, and hardly spend any money, and you know, put that aside to become an owner of. And we have no representation either. And anything can happen. And with a union, with two sectors, I was just thinking about it, just going through, across my head. You know, uh, it was just you know. There's every year the only thing that really expeditors come together is an expo in July every year, and then for we mean, and there's constant talking about a union at these expos, mm-hmm. and other YouTubers talk about it too from time to time for representing representing you know uh, subcontractor entry level or mid level people that has been doing it for a while, mm-hmm. and you know. That's, that's all I wanted to mention because it's it's just that, you know people get a mis a, a mis you know a misleading just by you know a misconception of the expediting business mm-hmm. you know when it, when it, people are out here like me actually doing and executing their job in the trucking industry and and they're getting their jobs done and all these things we have no representation either you know. Mm-hmm. And, True. <clears throat> I was thinking the same union, thing when he was you know, when he was mentioning the union idea. I was thinking the same thing that we all could use a union that represents the trucking industry, not just owner ops or not just contractors or, you know, it would be nice to have a union that looks into issues across the board because the. The plus side of a union would be that the unions put pressure on the companies and they know what to do. They know what the requirements are to take something to court. You know, they know the legality. You're you're a very smart lady. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Used to be in law enforcement, it helps. I'm sorry. (laughs) But seriously, like that that's they could help. That's the thing. It's like people they, I was listening to road dog trucker. You guys, I had so many subscribers of mine. Tell me you need to listen to road dog, listen to road. Dog. So, I, mean, I have it <laughs> preset on my satellite radio. I'm listening like all week. Road dog. Road dog. <laughs> Arf. <laughs> but they were talking about this, this whole thing as well. And, um, anyway, um, I don't know where was where was I going with that? <laughs> it was on the union thing. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. So they were talking about issues in the industry with the brokers and they were taking callers and the guy, the host asked the caller, well, what did you do about it? And he's like, well, I called a few people and nothing got done and that was it. And he's like, what the f-, f man did you call your friend or what you know who did you call yeah. you know, why didn't you raise hell yeah. about it and get something done you could have you have the legal right to if what you're telling me is true so the thing is but i think a lot of drivers they don't know what to do what are the laws are they going to win in court is it worth no. how much money do they have to put up for this you know some of the unions if they'll charge a membership fee and then they have funds to work with to get lawsuits through. Exactly. That, that's it. That was going to be my next point. That lady I helped at the time, she got her payback, but it was 1200 bucks. 1200 bucks is a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Whether it's two, four, five thousand, whichever. She was a subcontractor, but she had no clue what direction, and it took her 60 days. She got the other money within five, six days because she was owed three weeks' pay. And and I was thinking about what he was talking. I said, well, if this lady had a, a union rep, I'm sure it would have went a lot faster. Mm-hmm. You know, and, it, it, you know, when you're starting off like this and, and, and um, yeah, I, I just, you know, 
you're so right across the board. Absolutely. I mean, you know, everybody needs to try and understand everybody's part. A reefer, a flatbedder, an expediter, uh, uh, construction equipment, a, a excavator. Everybody, we're, we're all one team. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. We're, we're out in the transportation industry. We are one team. And I worked around the largest pieces of equipment in America when I was in the Army. A lot mm-hmm. larger than what these flatbedders haul. And everybody wants to judge somebody else because they drive this or drive that. It's got nothing to do with what you drive. It's what you are doing in the industry, what you are a productive driver in the mm-hmm. industry. That's what I'm, uh, you know, I, you know, it doesn't matter what you haul, what you drive. Mm-hmm. If you are going to a plant for America, you're going to Walmart, Target. You are going to a coal mine, an electrical company. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. If you're in an industry, we all are one team. And if we can get together and sit here and stop, you know, sometimes bitching at each other on a CD about stupid stuff, man. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, seriously? Seriously? They you know, was, you're, okay. I'm almost 50. Yeah. I'm almost 50, and these dudes are my age. They sound like 18, 16 yes. year old kids mm-hmm. talking about bullshit. They ain't got nothing to do with the trucking industry. No kidding. And they no want to call me out. I said, I don't give a damn. I said, mm-hmm. if you want to sit here, call me out, call me out. I said, look, man, we're all, we got to get this thing together. Mm-hmm. We do. The government is, they're putting their damn foot on everybody's neck. It don't matter if you're on or off. Company driver, mm-hmm. subcontractor. Mm-hmm. They're putting their foot down on everyone. Mm-hmm. Everybody is regulated. Every single person driver out here. Yeah, from people who have and never held you, a CDL. You, <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> It is. And I don't, I see, and I call things the way I see it. I've always been that kind of person. Me I like too. to have fun out here on my road, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, I mm-hmm. want to rock and roll all night. I'm on the road every day, kiss. Ah, you know, <laughs> but anyway, you know, I'm just saying, you know, the dispatcher point was excellent. You know, mm-hmm. if, if they can't become a driver, at least put them in their ass over here as a passenger. I see, be out here. Two days, two days, mm-hmm. you'll see through Atlanta, Dallas. Then you know what traffic jams are, construction sites are, unpredictable accidents, people getting killed, four-wheelers doing brake checking, semis. I was in the last September, and this four-wheeler, this is another thing. This four-wheeler did a brake check on a flatbed. The steel beam went right through the damn sleeper and killed him. He was a veteran. Oh, my God. And, That's and, insane. And, and shit like that. That driver in that four wheeler just get a little cheeky, blah 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 blah. And but mm-hmm. on the other end, if it was a trucker that was doing his job, driving speed limit and all these other things, this a hole don't want to cut off a, a, a truck, and they get hit and killed. Well, that truck is going to jail for years without even hesitation. I'm talking a driver that's not under the influence of anything. I'm talking mm-hmm. about good working drivers like you and I. And that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about stupid asses and trying to give other people's urine to pass drug tests like Sean's talking about. That was hilarious. I was like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not you know, my urine. It's like that. I'm it's like, not what? mine. It's so and so. Somebody else's really? urine to pass the drug test. Get the hell out of Dodge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but anyway, funny. I just wanted to reply to that call that caller much respect to all of you you lady truckers are rocking it every mm-hmm. time i see a lady trucker i, I do my air horn that's a big peace sign awesome. y'all rocking it awesome. y'all rocking it <laughs> thank you so much for calling in it's so good to talk to you yep you take it easy you too be safe out there all right Brittany. Mm-hmm. oh i will be donating mm-hmm. to your channel next weekend okay I couldn't do it this weekend. <laughs> All right. Have a oh. good one. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Yes, ma'am. Bye. All right. See you. Okay, guys. I'm going to try to call. I don't know why. Why did it call? Can't... It cut candy off again. It didn't do that with Cherie Moore. I had Cherie Moore on last week. 
And here, here we go. Here's Candy. I'm gonna memorize Candy's number. You guys want to know what it is? It's five 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 five. Do it. Just send a lady trucking, dude. Last week. <laughs> hey, I don't know what happens, but I, I I don't know what's happening either. Um, but he's he's got some points too, and I'm all you know. I'm a ten ninety nine myself. And I only get paid uh, 20% of each load. So I know a lot of guys are probably on here laughing like crazy, like, what the heck? And it's like, well, I got to make money somehow, you know. I try to take the best loads I could possibly get, you know, for however long the run is mm-hmm. and stuff. So I do the best I, I can, you know, just like everyone else. And I didn't, I know for a fact I didn't get in this industry to be rich. That's was never my goal. If I wanted to be rich, believe me, I'd be right up there with Trump. But mm-hmm. I don't. I want to be just making enough money to where my bills are paid, I have food, and uh, I have money I can try to save up because I got a wedding to pay for, you know, just like you, you probably got a wedding to pay for as well. Absolutely. <laughs> eventually. You know. Once, once yeah, eventually. <laughs> So, I mean, um, yeah, and I would also like to to extend an invitation to you to come to my wedding if I ever set a date yet. I would love that. <laughs> oh, my God, I would be so honored. Where are you out of in general? You don't have to say, like, your direct city, but. <laughs> okay, well, um, I lived in Texas when I was seven years old all the way up to um, uh, 36. And now I live in uh, Sierra Vista, Arizona. I am about maybe 15 minutes away from the actual tombstone in Arizona. But what is Earp was at? Oh, that is so cool. Oh, my God. I would like to actually go yeah. go see that. I'm like a huge history buff when it comes to going to historic markers and places. And yeah, yep. I really it's, enjoy it. It's- yeah, if you ever decide, you know, you want to come to Arizona and you want to do a blog or whatever at Tombstone, just hit me up and I will give you the hookup. That is awesome. That is awesome. I ran into a truck driver the other day. He worked for our, he works for RTI. Um, I ran into him at the distribution center that we ship out of for one of our dedicated accounts. But, okay, so he lives down in... Let me see if I can get this right. Neo Deche, Kansas. And he gave me some clarification, by the way, because in a video, I was mocking my GPS because it said, turn right towards Neo Deche. I'm like, oh, Neo Deche. It's all set. fancy. It sounds French. And I'm like teasing my GPS. And I'm like, I think the locals call it Neo Deche. Neo Deche. And he's like, He's like, oh my God, I was holding my head. It's Neo Deche. So to clear that up, Neo Deche. But the reason I mentioned him is he was talking about it was named after an Indian that was in the area, a very notable uh, person. And there's all these historical markers and things to go see. And so that makes two invitations now. I've got one invitation to go to Neo Deche and see some of the history and go down to, where'd you say, Arizona? Yep, to uh, uh, Tombstone, Arizona. Tombstone, Arizona. That would be so cool. So, <laughs> Yep. That would be awesome. <laughs> Before it gets too late, I did, because normally we go two hours. It's coming up on the two hour mark but i did want to ask you how long you've been driving and kind of what got you um what got you wanting to drive a truck like what was your what was your thought and what did you i guess i should ask this how long have you been driving what did you do before driving a truck um i have been driving for a solid five years straight now um i uh, used to work in uh, the fast food industry as well as retail, and uh, it wasn't easy, especially, like I said, or I was working three jobs. 
Uh, two of them was fast food. The other one was for a um, temp agency to be a secretary, you know, for certain offices and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I rarely got any sleep. I rarely, you know, was able to eat anything. And it felt like I was in an endless cycle of just always paying bills, 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 and never anything for myself at all. Mm-hmm. And eventually it got to the point where uh, one morning I woke up and I couldn't put any weight on my legs at all. Couldn't put no weight on the legs because I was so badly drained. And when I called mm-hmm. to let my uh, you know employers know that, hey, I'm not coming in, um, I'm not feeling good at all, and I would rarely ever call in unless it was, you know, serious. So, but for some reason, I don't know why, but as soon as I called to say I'm not coming in for the day, you know, I need to rest and everything, they said, well, then don't bother coming in at all. Click. Oh, my God. That is crazy. I've been, yep. I've been through it, though, because I've worked for so many different businesses prior to truck driving. Wasn't in the law enforcement side so much, but I mean, I've been through that. It's like, well, just don't come to work. You realize I'm sick. I could get our customers sick. Well, either come to work or you're done. It's like, really? Really? <laughs> yeah. And so since I lost when I lost my two main jobs. I lost my uh, little crappy uh, travel trailer that was falling apart. I lost my car, and I was pretty much homeless. And mm. you know, that's pretty much when I was asking, uh, you know, God, what is it you want me to do? I, I, you know, I was desperate. You know, like what direction I need to go? And you know, like I said, two weeks later, uh, trucking fell in my lap because there was an ad with uh, CRST that they would pay for uh, schooling, lodging, and everything, and uh, paid training. Mm -hmm. So I went with that. I was like, well, I ain't got nothing else to lose. I'm homeless, so. (laughs) That is so cool. Those darn ads. Those ads work, guys. They really do. Cherie Moore was a CNA, I believe, before... Uh, becoming a truck driver and she was sitting she was doing some sort of home care she talked about it on the last live program but she saw an ad about becoming a trucker going to the school and everything and that's what cha- made her decision you know so it's 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 amazing an ad because of an ad changed somebody's life i bet i bet your income went up quite a bit though between what you were doing. I know mine did. Even in law enforcement, I was at like 28000 a year. Mine immediately went to $50,000 a year. And all I invested, at the time it was cheaper to go through truck school. So I think I spent like 3500 to go through truck school. The company matched um, half of that. So I mean, a $1,500 investment, essentially a little more. And my income doubled. Like, it was amazing. Six weeks, $1,500, my income doubles. Unreal. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely amazing. Um, with working the three jobs, my total income for the, the year was uh, twelve grand. That's all I made. Oh, wow. So you made quite the jump then. Yeah, I made quite the the uh, jump. Uh, you know, at first, you know, when you first start out, you know, um, uh, I was only getting twenty five cents a mile. Mm-hmm. So it was very interesting, very difficult uh, to you know just to make money to just have something to eat and be able to pay for your cell phone, and that was pretty much all I could do. Mm-hmm. And uh, my first trainer that I got was a female. And uh, we went all the way to, from Oklahoma to California, Southern California. Uh, Stayed there for a couple of days because she wanted to see her son graduate from high school. I was like, okay. And then she got to talking to some other people and stuff. And next thing I know, 
is that she's talking to me about how she's going to jump ships, and she was a lease purchase op- uh, uh, operator. Mm. And so what she did was, uh, one stop, she got a uh, couple of things off in California, and then when we got over to Atlanta, Georgia, I kid you not, as soon as we got into Lord, Atlanta, Georgia, to one of the uh, – drop yards that happens to be in a really bad neighborhood. Mm -hmm. She gets the rest of her stuff out of the truck and abandons me there. I have no access to food, water, toilet, nothing. Oh my God. And I had to call the company to let them know and say, Hey, she abandoned ship. I'm stuck here. What do I do? And so I had to wait about a week before they got another trainer for me. And, but of course, they uh, gave me uh, extra money to pay for the motel room and stuff and to be able to mm-hmm. pay for a uh, taxi to get to there and what have you. So I'd have a room and what little extra that's left, you know, for food. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wound up with a mental trainer. And I only went on his truck for about a week, and then he went on vacation. And then they stuck me with a third trainer who, at first, I thought he was gay because mm-hmm. the way he was talking. So I'm like, <laughs> okay, so I, I know I need to act a certain way so that way I don't upset him, you know. Mm-hmm. Because the first thing that he tells me, he goes, do you have a motel room? And I'm like, Yeah. He goes, great, I'm going to use your shower. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. Mm-hmm. And I've been up for 32 hours because they busted me from one side to another. That happens to be, uh, I stayed in a motel that happened to be one of the motels that Johnny Depp was at. Oh, really? Yeah. In his younger years. <laughs> And I didn't realize it until I got to looking at the name, how it was, how it was looking and everything and stuff. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Ah! Ah. <laughs> I thought it was place that actor was here. Ah! You know, just excited. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. So once he came, showered and everything, and I grabbed all my stuff. And no sooner than he was already in the truck, and I started to put my – bag to put it on the the chair before i put it on there he says he says is that dirty i'm like excuse me he goes is your bag dirty and my first thought was yeah it's dirty i'm a female i like rolling in the mud what the heck is your problem dude you know it's like what the heck i'm like no it's not dirty i'm like you can see for yourself it's not dirty (gasps) Why did he ask if it's dirty? Of all things. Dirty. It's your bag dirty. Of all dirty. <laughs> yeah, and you know, and I told him and warned him, said, Look, dude, I've been up thirty two hours. I am not fit to drive. Mm-hmm. And he's like, Well, you got four hours to sleep, so get to cranking and I'm like, uh, no, I'm gonna sleep for about seven to eight hours to try to recoup of what, you know, sleep I have lost. Or otherwise mm-hmm. I'm gonna be sick. Mm-hmm. You know, so he didn't, he didn't want to listen to me. I tried to sleep as much as I could, but it was hard with the kind of music he was playing. I mean, it sounded okay as far as the melody goes, but the words I couldn't understand and it sounded kind of brutal mm-hmm. in a foreign language. So I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> but he made me drive the truck. Oh my he kicked God. me on the bump and made me drive the truck all mm-hmm. night long into the day. And I'm, like, exhausted. I'm trying like crazy to keep this truck on the road, back country roads, my I add. Mm-hmm. And, and I, you know, I'm doing the bobbin thing. I'm, like, look, like oh, mm-hmm. okay, okay, I got this. I, I'm trying, like, right. focus. Right, there's micro Come on, sleeps. do this. No, I'm doing a bobbin, and I did get off the road a little uh, bit, and I recovered just enough to avoid hitting another car. Oh, my God. Because I was so badly drained. And (laughs) 
as soon as we get there, and he's all like, well, aren't you going to back it up? And I'm like, dude, do you really want me to back it up? <sighs> I'm dead tired. I'm like, I have bags under my eyes. My eyeballs are bloodshot red. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. Nope. I have to back it up. Then I had to adjust the tandems, you, you know, and oh, that's what he tells me. He says, you need to adjust the tandems. And I'm like, well, I've never adjusted the tandems. And he goes, well, what kind of training did you get? I'm like, dude, nobody showed me how to adjust the tandems. Oh, wow. I mean, I'm not lying, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting all the, the training that I need. I said I had mm -hmm. one trainer abandon me, another trainer I only had for about a week, so he wasn't able to teach me everything I needed to know. Mm -hmm. And you're yelling at me and making me feel like, like the scum of the earth here. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it was terrible. It was worse experience of my life that I'm, you know, dealing with this kind of crap. That's crazy. There are so, so many horrible stories when it comes yeah. to the trainers, the training process. Yeah, you, you would think that he would, you know, call in and say, hey, um, she's not fully rested. She's not safe to drive. So we're just going to call it a night here and then mm -hmm. deliver it, you know, sometime in the morning, something like that along those lines. Mm -hmm. Nope. Nope, didn't care. You're you're just the pack mule. You you got to do it. Oh God, <laughs> that's that's their logical thinking. That's crazy. Yeah, it that's it's crazy. really really nuts. And I'm thinking, if I ever become a trainer, I am not going to be anything like this crap. Mm -hmm. This is bull. Yeah, the, you're you know? there to guide others and teach them something. You're not there to treat them like a pack mule. And I have to ask, was he, did, so did he turn out to be gay or what? Was, <laughs> no, no, he, he was, he was a straight guy, but I'm like, you could have fooled me. <laughs> I would have been kind of uncomfortable. I've met guys like that. I'm not going to name names, but and it's like, okay, you're, it's obvious. Like they are, they, they swing the other way and that's cool with me. I'm good with all of that, but <laughs> <laughs> then you find out they're like polar opposite. <laughs> it's just the way they are. But... Hey, I know it's just it's just weird. And me, I feel as though it's just all how mm -hmm. you you know how you've been brought up, what your logical thinking is now that you're an adult, and then mm -hmm. it's just you know I'm gonna do what the heck I want to do. I'm gonna make these women think that I'm gay so that I could be close to them, and when they least <laughs> expect it, I'm gonna be like, nope, I'm straight could as be a an arrow. Tactic. And yeah, I've seen it could all be your a good. tactic. I would be uncomfortable with a male trainer. Like that would make me very uncomfortable. Unless I knew like for certain they were gay. It's it's just, you know, it's it feels like a safety thing to me. But I don't know. Yeah, you know, you know, as soon as we got to headquarters, which I didn't realize was mm. the actual uh headquarters. Mm. I got out of there, I got all my stuff out of that truck, I left the spare key. I got into the cab, got to a motel of uh, where my uh, supposedly co-driver is supposed to be at because he fell out of the truck. <laughs> and uh, I got there, got my stuff into the room, and I just crashed out on the bed. And I was out from Friday evening at 10 p.m. until... Um, Sunday morning at nine is when I woke up. Oh, I wow. was dead to the world. You were exhausted. I have been that was, tired yeah. on a number of occasions. <laughs> I was beyond exhausted and everything. And when I did finally had enough ex uh, experience, mm -hmm. according to the company anyways, mm -hmm. to be a trainer, um, you know, the first, uh, uh, student that I got was a female and uh, you know she bat for our team which was fine I didn't care mm -hmm. about that but it was how she uh, how do I put this her outlook she tried to tell me how to do this job and I'm like mm -hmm. um you've had how long in school and she's <laughs> like six months and I'm like I've been out here for a year and a half. 
Mm -hmm. So your six months ain't nothing compared to the real thing being out here, sweet cheeks. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're training her. You're supposed to... (laughs) I hate yeah, I, I hate I, that when somebody goes to learn something. They're taking a course or they're going through school and the students are like, um, no, actually you're wrong about that. It should be done this way. It's like, what you haven't even been out there long enough to know that. What are you talking yeah. about? Yeah, this this is what this is what was messed up. I was trying to correct her on her logic on the driving because she wouldn't look out her side mirrors. Her convex mirror, she wouldn't look mm-hmm. at them. And I told her, you need to look to see how many people are in front of you, mm-hmm. beside you, and behind you in order to dictate whether or not if something was to happen, you have a clear window to get out of the situation. Mm-hmm. And she's like, no, I can see what's going on in front of me. I'm like, that's a bad move right there. That is not good. So, so needless to say, since we're going to my favorite city, not really, Chicago, Illinois, I took over to prove her that her logic was wrong. Mm -hmm. Because Chicago, their citizens have the logical explanation, well, I don't feel like passing you on your left like I'm supposed to. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pass you on your right by using the on or off ramp as a slingshot to get by you. Yep, (laughs) I've seen it. So, needless to say, yeah, I used that to my advantage to show and prove to her what she's doing wrong, but I can't get her to see that unless I put us in that situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Did she at least learn from that lesson? uh, Truth be told, I have no clue because no sooner did we get to a truck stop, she and I go in to use the restroom. She gets all of her stuff and bails on me. Oh, God. Some people and their t- children, you just can't teach them anything. <laughs> yeah. Stubborn and mules. It's, she's like, well, we clash too hard in personalities and stuff like that. And I just don't feel safe with you. And mm-hmm. I text her mm-hmm. saying, well, you know what? You're not cut out for this type of work because of the fact of mm-hmm. your not not no fault of your own, mind you, but your mentality, because you are too busy being closed-minded, not truly wanting to learn. That is so because, true. <clears throat> because I was trying to assess her um, her her mental ability of the strain of this job, because we have a mental strain more than a physical mm-hmm. strain. So I was testing that, her temperament and everything, you know, to see where she's at. So that way I can help her uh, work on what she's weak at, you know. Mm -hmm. But she didn't want to give me the opportunity to help her. So I figured, yeah, you're not going to last. I can tell. You're just not going to last. That is crazy. And then I had Mm -hmm. a couple of males that thought, Ooh, I have a female trainer and I'm going to get laid. That's awesome. And I'm like, uh... If you're talking about getting laid, you better be using that hand. <laughs> you, t- you told him that? I told him flat out, uh, yeah, no. Uh, yes, yes, I am a female. Yes, I am your trainer. And yes, I'm going to work you, but not in the way you think. <laughs> you right, work in I these don't... areas, you and your hand, and the other works are... Back there with you somewhere in private. <laughs> this yep, how this it's whole thing like goes it, down. It, it's like, I understand, you know, you're human, you're a male, you got to bust a nut, do that in the shower, not in my truck, and not on me. <laughs> no kidding. I'm that just so straight funny. about that because that so at the time I was single, mm-hmm. but I was just not looking, not interested, and mm-hmm. I just, yeah, no. I don't know where you've been, and I don't even want to take that chance. Sorry. <laughs> That's why we women invented the toys. Thank you. <laughs> that is awesome. That is awesome. Well, I hate to do it because it's getting late and everything, and I'm enjoying right. this discussion. We've definitely got to have you back on because I, I think what I like about you the most is you're blunt. You tell it how it is, and that's how I've mm-hmm. always been. You know, I, I can't stand, like, fake you know, made up people. That's why I can't do the reality TV thing. 
unless I found one that was actual reality. If they would work with me to like, put reality on TV, I'd be happy. Call me. But no, I absolutely enjoy talking to you. And um, unfortunately, we're going to have to cut tonight off. But I would love to have you on again sometime. Sure, not a problem. I, I even thought about doing my own uh, YouTube uh, video instruction on what it is you need to do in order to know if you are a truck driver material. Ooh, that's so I, good. So, okay, so do you have a YouTube channel as of yet? No, not yet. <laughs> oh my God, you got to get one going. So I started a group. I just put it up on the screen right for those watching on screen. But there is a group on Facebook I need to put you in. It's called American Truckers Casting Call. And what it is, it's an open call for anybody that wants to get videos out there to drivers, you can post videos on that group. And then I go through those and I, I, I like pick from a pool of those videos and I'll put it on an American truckers episode. And my deal to those that post on that page is if you have a YouTube channel and want me to plug you, if I use your video, then I will plug your channel. So it's perfect for new, um, the newbies getting started on YouTube because you get plugs and subscribers and everything. And it's a win-win for both of us because we can get videos out there. So, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, uh, uh, one thing I will definitely say is that if I see somebody backing up into a spot and they're struggling, whether it's fatigue or they didn't get enough experience in backing, I will literally get out of my truck and help them. Mm -hmm. That is so cool. We need because, more of that. Because I hear always, you know, guys on the CB bitching about how, oh, look at that person. They don't know what the heck they're doing. Da, 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 da. I literally at one point got on, got on the CB and told them, shut up. If you ain't big enough to have the balls to get out of your damn truck and help this poor person out to get into the spot so all these other truckers can leave, then shut up. No kidding. You are part of the problem. You're not part of the mm -hmm. solution. And if you really want to keep jacking those jaws, meet me outside the truck. I'd be happy to shut you up. <laughs> that is so true. That is so true. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. It's like... You you know, as an adult, what's mm -hmm. right and wrong. And you know that when somebody's new to this business and industry, don't talk your crap about them, especially on the CB. Mm -hmm. Be man enough or woman enough to get your butt out of the truck. Actually ask them if they need assistance to get in the spot. Because no we all know that we struggle, especially when we're very tired. Mm -hmm. you know, or we have to use the restroom really bad or something, mm -hmm. that we do need help. And there is no problem, no shame whatsoever to ask for help or to give assistance, all right? Exactly. Because the sooner you help mm -hmm. that person get into that spot, the easier it is for other drivers that can quit their dang bitching, you know, about and being holed up from it. getting out of there. Exactly. I carry two-way radios in my truck. And for the purpose of if I come up on an accident and we need to coordinate to direct traffic and get an ambulance in, or just for what you mentioned at the truck stops, if I'm getting out to help a driver, I'll toss them a two-way radio and say, listen on here, we'll communicate. I'll tell you if you're too close, you know, help them out. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. And that's what we need to do. If we're going to be a community and we're going to be, you know, needed to back each other up and everything else, and you want to talk about unions and everything else, well, we need to start with ourselves by helping each other out. We're supposed to be a big family, and we need to stay strong together and be unified instead of bitching all the damn time. It's ridiculous. Amen. Amen. Candy Keith, tell it how it is. It was so nice to talk to you tonight. And it like was I so said, nice. Yeah, it was so nice talking to you. You have my cell phone number, so if you want to talk, chat, or whatever, you know, you got it. <laughs> awesome. 
<laughs> I will be in touch for sure. You have a great night and be safe out there. Always. <laughs> God bless. Bye. Bye. been listening to trucker talk live with Brittany richardson be sure to follow her at american truckers on youtube and Brittany and pink on facebook until next time be safe out there and keep it between the lines